Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Pointwise Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this video, we'll discuss how to use the features on the Global tab in Automatic Surface Mesh. Here we have a half symmetry model of a drone. Taking this into Automatic Surface Mesh, it brings us straight into the Global tab. The Geometry Characteristics frame provides tools to give you a sense of the overall scale of the geometry. You can use the checkboxes to persistently render the characteristic, or you can hover over the value to temporarily zoom in and render it. Max Model Extent shows you a Cartesian line bounding box for the geometry, and min boundary length highlights the smallest geometric edge. Model Boundaries displays laminate edges in red, and Symmetry Boundaries displays edges that are within tolerance of a symmetry plane in green. This model is slightly out of tolerance, so our symmetry edges are shown in red, but that's okay. The Resolution Frame allows you to specify resolution goals for your surface mesh. You can specify a minimum and initial edge length using the min subdivisions and max subdivisions fields. Or you can use the drop downs to specify these as edge lengths instead. You can also specify target angular resolution for curvature. The goals frame allows you to specify meshing goals for your surface mesh. Max aspect ratio limits the aspect ratio of anisotropic cells. Boundary growth rate is used to set connector growth rates, 2D T-Rex growth rates, and decay rates throughout the surface meshing. And the final setting of this frame algorithm lets you set the cell type of the resultant surface mesh. Advancing front uses purely triangles. Quad dominant uses as many quads as possible. And hybrid gives you quads in the anisotropic region and triangles in the isotropic region. We will skip the advanced frame for now and go over that in a separate video. And our final frame is the display frame, which allows you to visualize the size field and examine metrics. So let's show the size field. The surface is now rendered in grayscale, and hovering over the surface, I can get an idea of the target edge length for different features of the geometry. Zooming in a little closer, we can see that a sample surface cell is shown at the pointer location, and it changes size based on the target edge length. Now let's run Create Surface Mesh. We can now see our surface mesh, and the table in the display frame has been populated with values. This table displays the maximum value and the count above our threshold for area ratio, aspect ratio, and max angle. We can edit the threshold values based on the quality we need and use the show checkboxes to display the cells that violate the quality in red in the display window. We can also right click on the max value to bring up a menu and we can choose to zoom to that cell's location. We can see that the quality issues here are due to a sliver quilt and outside of automatic surface mesh, we probably want to truncate this quilt and rearrange the quilting topology to avoid this issue. As we hover over a cell, its metrics are displayed in this metrics box up in the corner. This particular cell violates both the area ratio and aspect ratio thresholds we set, and we can easily see that because the values are outlined with a red box. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button or subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, drop us a line below or connect with us via LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.